in navigating through the blessed life of the master of the ladies of the universe, Lady Fatima to Zahra, the beloved daughter of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Were we going to learn about her life, her contribution, her sacrifice, and her legacy? So please, let's meet every night throughout the holy month of Ramadan and learn from the beautiful life of Lady Fatima alayhi salam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa habibi qulubina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ahli bayteh al-tayyibin al-tahirin. My friends, my brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. God tells the Prophet, peace be upon him, that I know sometimes you become tight-chested وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ, صدرك بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Indeed, we know, God knows, that sometimes you become stressed out because of their accusations. People who are around you, non-believers, the hypocrites, you are overburdened by their accusations. So the Prophet is a mortal, is a human being. He has emotions. He gets upset. He gets sad. But then, never for a believer, there is never no way out. Always a believer, God finds him an escape route. A relief. Woman yattaqillah yaj'allahu makhrajan. God calls, calls this makhraj. Makhraj is an exit. Have you seen the exits? At the time of emergencies, you use that emergency exit. God says, I will bestow upon you if you fear me, if you connect with me. At the time of emergency, at the time of stress, at the time of distress, I'll find you an emergency exit, a relief exit. So the Prophet used to find in the house of Ali and Fatima a relief, an emergency exit a place where he find rest. Why the house of Ali and Fatima? Because it was bigger in size, it was different in furniture, different in color, some fancy food there. No, 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 none of these. The house was the simplest house. In fact, if one day they have a good dish, that day is a big day for them. So, not because of the food or the furniture or the garden of that house, but because of the inner beauty, because of the sense of content and satisfaction and qana'ah, because that house is the house of Islam, the embodiment the personification of Islam. Islam was very visible in that house. Iman was moving in that house, was filling that house. It was beautiful because of the beauty of the people of that house, my friends. Bring the best mansion today. If the husband and wife are not agreeing with each other, they are not respecting and helping each other, that house becomes more tight, more constrained than a small cell in the prison. That house becomes dark. 
It has no warmth. It has no beauty. But then go to a one-bedroom apartment. If the husband loves his wife, they love each other. Then they look at that house as being the most beautiful place on earth. So it's not about the size, neither about the quantity. It's about the quality. It's about the akhlaq and the manners of the people of live, who live in that house. They can make their house either beautiful, attractive, or they can make it look ugly. That was the house of Ali and Fatima. A house built on taqwa. Afaman assasa bunyanahu. Chapter 9, Surah at tawbah Afaman assasa bunyanahu ala taqwa min Allahi wa ridwan. Build your institution, your foundation, your house, your bunyan. Build it based on reverence for God. Ala taqwa min Allahi wa ridwan. The satisfaction of God. Once you satisfy God, God is going to make you satisfied too. Because their house was based on piety. No violations, no arguments, no aggression, not even a single incident of violation inside that house. Both lived up to their responsibilities. Both protected each other. They never argued with each other. They never disobeyed each other. They never had a fight. They never raised their voice. My friends, put Ali and Fatima aside for a minute. I saw some families. I myself saw several families and I watched them. The husband and the wife never fight with each other. They never yell at each other. They never raise their voice on each other. And they are not infallible. They are not prophets. They are not saints. They are ordinary believers. They are awliya Allah. Awliya Allah, true friends of God, true servants of God. So it would be natural for Ali and Fatima to live in harmony, in peace. Today what we need in our families is harmony. Sometimes more than food and a drink, we need harmony. We need understanding. We need respect. We need trust. So the Prophet would come when he is overloaded with stress. He would find joy and relief in the house of Ali and Fatima. He finds positive energy. He finds inspiration in the house of Ali and Fatima. Though the house is very tight. The house is a room, my friend. A room and then just an open space in the front of that room. Maybe a very small kitchenette on the side and some bathroom. That's it. I don't think the house was more than 300 square feet. That's the total side size of that house. Physically, the house was small. Spiritually, it was so spacious. The Prophet finds joy inside that house when he goes there. He relaxes. He enjoys every moment talking to Fatima, playing with Hassan and Hussein and Zainab and Umm Kulthum, conversing with Ali. Helping them. Sometimes the Prophet would go there and help. He considers himself part of that house, a member of that house. The Prophet died in that house. Whenever historians say, whenever he's about to leave on a trip, the last stop is the house of Ali and Fatima. Whenever he comes back from any trip, the first stop after the masjid, he goes to the mosque. He does two rak'ah of your prayers, greets the mosque. Then immediately he switches to the house of Ali and Fatima. He was so attached, emotionally attached to that house because there were no quarrels. In fact, the Prophet 
built a room for Fatima and then he opened a window between his own room and the room of Fatima. Kuwa. A window. So he can see Fatima and talk to her. <laughs> this is how. This is how he was attached to them. Close to them. He could not see Fatima out of his sight. He wanted to be with her because Fatima induces him with energy too. As I said, there is a positive energy in that house. Can we bring this positive energy to our home? Does it have it in our homes? Can we have it? Can we establish it? When we buy a home, we make sure that we have good electricity. We have good Wi-Fi, good internet, good gas pipes, good supply of water. But did we think about something more important than this? That is the positive energy, the real energy. And that is the energy of faith, the energy of humanity. And this energy does not come from the gas companies or electricity companies or water companies or internet companies. It comes from you, my friend. It comes from you. You have to make it. You have to work on it. You are the distributor. You are the provider and the supplier of that energy. When you go higher and higher in your goals, when you connect to God and ask guidance from God, Allah waliyu alladheena amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila al-nur. This life is full of darknesses. Though we have plenty of lights and power and energy and electricity, but people live in darkness. The darkness of materialism, the darkness of of partitioning themselves from God, separating themselves from God. You don't disappear from your creatures. It is their sins and their violations that make them disappear from you. God like a sun, shining sun. Does the sun disappear? It doesn't. We carry an umbrella to intercept the sun rays, the sun shining, the sunlight. We go under the shade to protect ourselves from the sun. Otherwise, the sun is there. God is there. And God is the one who takes us from the darkness of this life. Minat Volumat, not just one darkness, the darkness of the soul, the darkness of the sin, the darkness of materialism, the darkness of corruption, the darkness of injustice, the darkness of disbelief. Kufr, disbelief. Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. The darkness of this economic disparity between the rich and the poor. Even nowadays, if a rich and a poor, both of them get infected with coronavirus, the ventilator is res reserved for the rich, not the poor. This is injustice. God says all creatures are equal in my eyes, so don't discriminate. But these are darknesses. But the house of Ali and Fatima was full of sunlight, was full of light of faith, light of commitment and satisfaction and content and rida, rida. They had rida. This is what is missing. Once we can reach that stage of rida, acceptance, acceptance. Al rida bi qada illah. Al rida bi qada illah. Allahumma ij'al nafsi mutma'innatan bi qadarik radiyatan bi qadaik. Bestow on me this power of acceptance. I accept what you decide for me. 
I don't revolt against you. I don't argue with you. I don't complain about what you have given me. Al-Ridha bi Allah. Ali and Fatima, despite many shortages in their life, but they had Ridha, consent. Al-Ridha bi Allah. Ali and Fatima also, my friends, were prepared to raise a family, the best family. About the family of Fatima, the, the Quran says, kawthar, We have a whole chapter in the Quran. Chapter 108 speaks about Fatima's, Fatima's children and offspring and family. A promise God made to his apostle, to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fatima was not, never forced to get married. She accepted marriage out of appreciation and understanding. She was a very proud daughter to her father, the Prophet, a very proud wife and a proud mother to her children. She never complained about her children to anyone. Fatima perceived the family, the house, as being an incubator, a school to raise children. Some women are tired of their kids, tired of their families, tired of their homes. Fatima was very happy about her home, about one single bedroom home. She was happy. Fatima was very happy about her children, about her husband. Fatima looked perceived at the home as being a place where you nurture and raise and prepare your children. And look what she did. With Zainab alayhi salam, she focused on teaching Zainab, training Zainab, preparing Zainab for her future. Why Zainab was so brave on the day of Ashura and post Ashura in Kufa, in Damascus, in Medina. Because Zainab was trained by Fatima. Because Fatima knew how to instill, inculcate these values of bravery, steadfastness, perseverance in the heart of Zainab alayhi salam. Sabr. She learned this sabr from her mother Fatima. Thus Zainab gives this powerful statement. Powerful statement, my friends. When Yazid asked her, what do you think of what I did? Or Ibn Ziyad, what do you think of, of what happened to your brother Hussein and his group? She said, Ma ra'aytu illa jamila. I've seen nothing but a beauty. I've seen nothing but goodness. Ma ra'aytu illa jamila. These are the seeds of Fatima to Zahra because her teacher was Fatima, her mentor, her guide, her coach was Fatima alayhi salam. And look at Hussein, who was raised also by Fatima. At the peak of the tragedy of Ashura, he lost all his companions, all his family members. Now he lost the baby boy, who was only six months old. When he carries the baby boy, and the boy is bleeding, he says, Hawwana alay, hawwana alay, made it easy for me to accept. Hawwana alay. Ma nazala bi adnahum bi Allah. As long as God is watching and seeing. This gives me comfort to lose my son in such a way. He didn't collapse. He was thankful to God. This is the production of Fatima to Zahra. This is the work of Fatima. Same thing with Umm Kulthum. Same thing with Imam Hassan. Same thing with Ali. Ali comes back from the battle of Uhud because he married Fatima after the battle of Badr. So he didn't see her during that battle. But once Badr was over, he married her. And after that, how many battles Imam Ali was the hero of it? He comes back home wounded, bleeding. Fatima tends to him 
comforts him. Fatima never complains, never nag, never say, Ali, you left the house, you left the kids, you left me alone, you are endangering your life. Fatima was encouraging him every time. She says, Barakallahu fika ya Abu al-Hasan. May God bless you. May God protect you. Fatima was the engine that produces nothing but encouragement, hope, aspiration, inspiration, strength. This is Fatima alayhi salam. So mothers should not think that my time at home is wasted being, I, I should have gone to this college, to this, you know, it's good, it's good to study. But if you are raising good children, then your time is not being wasted. You are building the future. You are making a future. You are making leaders. You are a homemaker. Your job, homemaker is more important than engineer and scientist and nurse and doctor and professor. You are a homemaker. You are building strong society, strong generation who can protect their societies. So working at home is not degradation to you. Neither the work of the man at home when he helps his family. You should not think of yourself if you are vacuuming, you are less of a man. This is, does not befit your character. You have to feel proud if you are helping your home, cleaning your home, helping your wife, doing the house chores. You have to be proud of that. We learn this from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa sallam, from our prophets, our imams, who used to stand with their wives, who used to work at home. One day the Prophet comes to the house of Ali and Fatima. He sees Ali is working and Fatima is carrying the baby, feeding one of the babies. Imagine Fatima had four babies in only nine years. Only nine years she had four babies. Ali was helping her out. The Prophet came and smiled. He said, Ali, you are the best husband. Do you know that you not only made me happy, you made, you made your Lord happy when you helped your wife Fatima. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.